How would you respond when someone that you know walks up to you and they say, hello, my friend, you look so happy today. What's wrong? You know, usually we would worry that somebody thinks there's something wrong and we don't know what's wrong. Even when we are happy and there's nothing wrong, when somebody says, what's wrong, we worry. Because worry has become part of our daily lives. We worry about a lot of things. And we also worry when there is nothing to worry about. Some of you are already worried that I did not greet, that I did not introduce myself, and I did not mention lockdown, coronavirus, and COVID-19. Good morning, everyone. My name is Chifiwa, and I am so honored today to be sharing the Word of God with you. Today, I want us to answer this question, should I be worried? Today is Sunday, 26 April 2020, four days to the end of level five lockdown. But most of us are worried because two days before we move to level four lockdown, we don't want to hear the words, my fellow South Africans. This kind of greeting from our president worries us nowadays. Why do we worry? And why is it so easy to worry? And when we worry is because there is something or someone that is bothering us or troubling us or burdening us or scaring us or all of the above. Have you realized that we worry about small things and about big things? We worry about things that are there and things that are not there. In January, we worry about going back to school, going back to work, and we worry about February. In February, we worry about Valentine's Day and other things, and we worry about March. In March, we worry about Easter and the school holidays, and we worry about April. And it goes on and on, and we worry about a lot of things. We have normalized worry. And today, I want us to answer this question, should I be worried? And I want us to learn three things in answering this question. Number one, when we worry, we disbelieve scriptures and we distrust God. Number two, I want us to learn that when we worry, we are mastered by our circumstances. I also want us to, to learn that when we worry, it is unwise because our future is secured in God. Lastly, we will answer the question, what is the easiest way to stop worrying? Now listen to what God says about worry. We are reading today the Sermon on the Mount as recorded by Matthew in chapter 6. The Sermon on the Mount talks about living right before God. It is preceded by Jesus being baptized in chapter 3. In chapter 4, he is tested by the devil, he conquers, and he begins to preach the gospel, and he also calls out his first disciples. His disciples join him, and then he goes on to Galilee, preaching the gospel and healing the sick. And the Bible says, many crowds follow him. The sermon actually starts in chapter 5. The Bible says, when Jesus sees a crowd, he climbs on a mountain. His disciples join him, and he begins to teach. He teaches about the salt of the earth and the light of the world. He teaches about the law and anger and divorce and love for our enemies. In chapter 6, he teaches about giving and prayer. He also goes on to teach about treasures in heaven. And then he also teaches about God and mammon. Mammon, in this case, representing wealth as a false object of worship. Now, I want us to pick up the story in verse 25. This is Matthew chapter 6. We'll read from verse 25 to verse 34. And it reads as follows. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. 
Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Jesus categorically prohibited worry on the Sermon on the Mount. Three times in that short passage, he commanded, do not worry. And the way he said it, it shows the comprehensiveness of his charge. In verse 25, he, he acknowledges worry as a common practice, and he says, do not worry about life. In verse 28, it shows that he knows about the specific things that might worry us when he says, do you worry about clothes? In verse 31 and 34, he uses the same word, but in a way that means don't even start worrying. Now, to continue worrying or to start worrying in the first place is to violate the Lord's command. If we worry, what kind of faith do we manifest? Think about it in this way. As Christians, we believe that God has redeemed us and that he has taken us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We believe that he has made us rulers and co-heirs with Christ. We believe that he has given us eternal life. But we don't trust that he can, he can get us through tomorrow and the week after and the next month. Unbelievable, hey? So what does it mean when we worry? So number one, when we worry, we disbelieve scriptures and we distrust God. We cannot proclaim that we believe the scriptures on one hand and then on the other hand, Worry if God is really going to provide. If we do that, we are saying one thing out of the side of our mouth and another thing on the other side of the mouth. It is shameful of us to say how much we believe the Bible and then worry about God fulfilling what he says in the Bible. When we reduce God to a man like us, we will worry. Remember Philippians 4.19 where Paul says, and my God will supply all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So when we disbelieve scriptures, we start to think that God will supply our needs according to our worries. This is not true. He will provide for us according to his glorious riches the same way that he feeds the birds of the sky and he clothes the flowers of the fields. Our minds might tell us that the more we worry, the more God will supply. Not true, because God will supply and all our needs, he will supply them according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. The moment we feel like we need to do something in order for God to provide, we become religious. Religion says to us, I must do something in order for God to do something for me. It makes us think that until we worry, that is, you know, doing something, and we call it worrying, it makes us think that until we worry, God is not going to do anything for us. Christ wants us to trust God, and he wants us to believe the scriptures. The devil, on the other hand, he wants us to worry, and he, he wants us to start doubting that God will provide. Let us not forget that God is not a man, that he should lie. He is not human, that he would change his mind. He does not speak and fail to act. He does not promise and carry out the promise. If he said he will supply, he will supply. And he doesn't need us to worry in order for him to remember to supply. 
So if we lose our belief in the scriptures and we lose our trust in God, we will worry. The second thing that I want us to learn is that when we worry, we are allowing our circumstances to control us. We are choosing to be mastered and to be controlled by our circumstances instead of being mastered and being ruled by the truth of God. It doesn't make sense to believe that God can save us from eternal hell and eternal death if he cannot help us with the practical matters of life. Think about the circumstances and the fluctuations and the trials of life that we go through. Think about the uncertainty and the hopelessness of life. If we allow these things to master us and to control us, we are going to be paranoid. People who are controlled by their circumstances are the same ones who will come to you and say, you look happy today. What's wrong? They don't believe that God's promises are way higher than our circumstances. When we are mastered by our circumstances, we will become religious, thinking that we have to do something about our circumstances in order for God to provide for us. By doing this, we will end up worried because irrespective of how much we do, none of us can add even a single breath to our lives. Now, when you catch yourself worrying, go back to scripture and let God open your eyes. If we believe him when he says he does not lie and he does not change his mind, we must rejoice when he says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When he says, when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you over. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Fires, waters, valleys, darkness, no circumstances beyond God. Let us not be controlled by circumstances. Let us be ruled by God's word. Let us be comforted by his promises. The third thing that I want us to learn today is that worrying is unwise because our future is secured in God. In Matthew 6, where we read, verse 34, Jesus says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So Jesus was saying to us, don't worry about the future and its share of troubles. Just deal with them as they come, for there is no way to solve them in advance. He's actually saying to us, don't use today's blessings to solve tomorrow's worries. For tomorrow has its own worries, and God has already supplied the riches we need for tomorrow. Providing for tomorrow and planning for tomorrow is good. God wants us to do that. But worrying about tomorrow is sin because God said we should not worry. Lamentation 3 verse 23 says to us that his mercies are new every morning. So instead of worrying about tomorrow and the next week and the, and the next month and all the circumstances that are brought by tomorrow, let us make our request known unto God. You know, this is what Philippians 4 says to us, right, in verse 6 to verse 7. It says, let us not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we must let our requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Remember, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and yes, forevermore. So when tomorrow comes, with his own worries, Jesus will be Jesus doing what Jesus does best. That means that he will be doing the same thing tomorrow that he's doing today, and he will be providing for our needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. It is unwise to worry about tomorrow. It is wise to secure tomorrow in Christ Jesus. Now, the last thing that I want us to reflect on today is how do we stop worrying? What is the easiest way or the simplest way to replace worrying with something else? 
Now let's read again where we read Matthew chapter 6. In verse 33, Jesus says, Instead of worrying about what we will eat or what we will drink and what we will wear, we must seek first his kingdom, the kingdom of God in this case, and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to us. What we will eat, what we will drink, and what we will wear. The Bible says all these things will be added unto us. So instead of worrying, let us seek. Instead of worrying about our circumstances, let us seek his kingdom. Instead of worrying about tomorrow, let us allow God to add all these things unto us. I want us to finish by looking at two stories of two guys who worried because one thought something was too simple and the other one thought this is too complex. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 5, we meet a man called Naaman who was healed of leprosy. Now this is how his healing came about. A servant in his house told him there's a prophet in Israel who can heal him. Off he went to the prophet with gifts and gifts and gifts. When he got there, Elisha the prophet sent a messenger and said to him, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and you'll be cleansed. Now, Naaman didn't believe this. He thought, this is too simple. It can't be true. He was bothered. He was worried. He was worried that Elisha did not come out to meet him and call on the name of the Lord and lay hands on him and perform some miracle. I mean, he even wanted to come up with a solution for his own worry by mentioning you know, other rivers that were better than the river Jordan. It was after his servants convinced him to do the simple thing that the prophet told him. He did it. He went to wash himself seven times in the river Jordan and he was healed. So Naaman over here was worried that this looks too simple. The second story is the story of Peter, when Peter walked on water. We find this story in Matthew 14. Jesus tells his disciples to go ahead of him, crossing a lake by boat. Much later, he follows them and he decided, I'll so much walk on water to go to them. He walked over the lake. When the disciples saw him coming, walking on water, they panicked, calling him a ghost. He said to them, it's me. And Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. So Jesus said to him, come. And Peter starts to walk on water, like walking on water. A very complex thing to do if you are not Jesus. So Peter walked successfully on water until he looked at the water and he looked at the wings. And the complexity of his situation worried him. He began to sink. So the complexity of walking on water when it's windy, it became too much for Peter and he worried. It's a good thing Jesus was there and he saved him. Now, two things we learn from these two stories. Sometimes we worry because our circumstances are too simple. And sometimes we worry because our circumstances are too complex. Now, when the simplicity and complexity of life begins to worry us, Jesus says we must seek the kingdom of God. This is the kingdom that God offers. And in the kingdom, we find righteousness. We find peace. We find joy. And we find the Holy Spirit. This is the kingdom of love. The kingdom of God's promises. This is the kingdom where the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. This is the kingdom where the plans of the Lord are made known to us. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Plans to give us a hope and a future. So what have we learned today? We learned that we worry about a lot of things. And we also worry when there's nothing to worry about. We worry when our lives are simple and we worry when our lives are complex. 
when we worry, we, we disbelieve scripture and we distrust God. We learn that when we worry, we allow our circumstances to control us. We learn that worrying is unwise because our future is secured in God. We also learn that the easiest way to stop worrying is by seeking the kingdom of God. The kingdom of peace, love, joy, liberty, and God's promises. Let us remember what God promised in Isaiah 46, verse 4, when he said, Even when you are old, I will be the same. When you are gray-haired, I will take care of you. I will still be responsible for what I made. Yes, I will take you and keep you safe. My prayer for us today is from Numbers chapter 6 from verse 24. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show favor toward you and give you peace. God bless you.